Hi there. Today we're going to have a quick look at a strategy in cricket as suggested by a subscriber, uh, Stuart Waltz. So here as you see what Stuart has asked, he's looking for what on the face of it is a, a fairly simple strategy. Place a lay bet at odds of 1.1 for 50% of your stake, uh, offset at 1.2, and then a further offset for 25% of your stake at odds of 1.3, and then the remaining 25% of your stake should be left to run as a bet. And then, in conjunction with that, he's looking for a stop loss to be sitting at 1.05. The problem with that is you can't simply do a straightforward lay to back because you cannot specify multiple different offsets. For a lay to back trade or indeed a back to lay trade. So you have to actually split this up into its constituent elements and create a number of lay to back trades with the corresponding offset configured for each. So there's a little bit of extra work, but it's, it's you know, not significant. Now, in addition to that, Stuart hasn't mentioned whether this should be done pre match. That hasn't mentioned whether it should be done on the pre-match favourite or the outsider. So what we're going to do is I'm going to assume that it's pre-match. And I am also going to assume that we're going to do it on both teams. So we'll be using the apply to all option. Okay, so the first thing to do is set up the initial rule. Which is simply going to be place. First of the later back trade. at 1.1 for 50 pounds. So I'm going to use a total liability of 100. Obviously you need to um, adjust this to whatever stake sizes you wish to use. So we're going to assume that it's going in a minute before the start of the match. And I'm going to use the apply to all option to apply these settings to each team. So we're going to place a trade, and that, play, that trade is going to be on both teams, so we need to use the all option in conjunction with this option here. It's a later back, fixed odds at 1.1, and we're going to have an initial offset of 10 ticks. He hasn't specified whether he wants to green up from this, I'm thinking he doesn't, so I'm just going to leave smart bets off for this demonstration, but obviously if you want to green up, switch smart bets on. The bet size is going to be a fixed amount of £50 liability for the first later back trade we're putting in. And we need a stop loss. And the stop loss needs to be at 1.05. So we're going to trigger it at um, four ticks below our entry point. So that's going to be 1.06. And place it at five ticks below, i.e. 1.05. I won't bother specifying a trailing stop loss. And I won't bother doing smart bets to keep it the same as that. Now, we also mentioned that this could happen multiple times during a game. So you may want to configure this by using a repeat on success option. Uh, I'm just going to leave that off, but you might want to play around with that uh, to tie in with this thing here. Alternatively, you could potentially change the execution uh, count. Um, that's not as flexible because the repeat on success option will only fire if the first later back trade is successful, it will then go in and enter it again. Whereas this one will only go in again when or after a particular time delay. So that's limited in terms of its flexibility in this example. So yes, by all means have a replay with the repeat on success. Don't need to fill a kill, but we do need to keep. Since this, this uh, later back trade is going in before the match begins, we need to keep the offset in place once the match starts. Now he hasn't specified any conditions, so we don't we won't bother putting any conditions in. But all the usual stuff like uh, market volume and so on and so forth, you may want to consider. And that is essentially it for the first part of the strategy. So you'll see at the moment I've actually got the Bangladesh. England match on at the moment and uh, so it's taking its figures from this match. 
So you'll see here the first bet, the first lay at 1.1 for a stake of 500, i.e. a 50 pounds liability. And the offset at 1.2 again for 500 pounds. In other words, the smart bet option isn't switched on, so it's not going to try and spread the profit across the board. And then we've got the stop loss again for 500 pounds. Um, at 1.05 if the last trading price is less than or equal to 1.06 so as soon as the last trading price hits 1.06 it will trigger a back bet to be placed at 1.05 and there's no trailing stop loss and bets are being kept okay so to set up the second part where we have an offset up to 1.3 in other words 20 ticks we simply just need to copy this rule here. Go in and edit it accordingly. And this is going to be for a £25 liability. Again, same start time, one minute before the start. The action is going to be exactly the same, except that the offset will be 20 ticks, the fixed amount will be £25, everything else will be the same. So again there you see that it's going to place a lay bet at 1.1 for 250, an offset at 1.3 for 250 and the stop loss is at the same point. Now you might think for the remaining £25 we just need to um, place a lay bet since we're, we're not going to do an offset for the third part. However, if you're placing a lay bet or a back bet, you cannot specify an offset for it. Uh, the offset is all part of, sorry, you cannot specify a stop loss for it. It's all part of the, the trading functionality. So we need to do, we need to employ a little trick there. And all we're going to do is set up this rule again and edit it. So this is virtually going to be the same. We'll just edit the, uh, the various details we want. Again, it's going to be a 25 liability. All the same settings here. And the action is going to be um, all the same. Stop loss is going to be the same. The only thing that's different is going to be the offset. We're going to specify an offset of 30 ticks. Now, when you're doing a, a place of trade on action, you have to specify an offset. Although we're not actually needing an offset for the remainder of our stake. And that's where the little trick is going to come in. So if we just make sure that those are all correct. Okay, so you'll see here that we now have exactly the same thing, except that offset is going in at 1.4. Now, what we need to do immediately after that is cancel those offset bets at 1.4. And by doing it this way, that makes that, that allows us to use the lay to back place a near trade mechanism to create the stop loss. So what we need to do is add in another rule that is going to Cancel any offset back bets, which are happen to be sitting at 1.4. And again, we wish to do this relative to start time. Now, what you want to do is probably delay this by a few seconds to make sure that those bets, the original bets, are actually in the market or ready to go. Uh, the reason being is if you happen to allocate this strategy after the match is in play, there's obviously going to be an in-play delay for those things to go through. So if you had it set at one minute in the same way as all these things are set to one minute, you may find that this rule gets triggered, but the bets aren't there yet. So what we actually need to do as well to help cover that is specify a condition as well. But let's do the action first. And we're going to just cancel bets 
we're going to cancel back bets but only the pending offsets and those offsets are sitting at odds of 1.4 But we also want to delay this to make sure that those bets exist. Um, so what we want to do is a market bet count. Uh, the number of bets is greater than, and they should be back bets. They should be pending offset bets at 1.4. So that's just a, 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 a safety mechanism to make sure that this rule doesn't fire before it needs to fire, if you see what I mean. Okay, and that, folks, is essentially it. So if we save that, and although this is meant to go in pre-match, We'll just assign it to this market that's on the go at the moment. And you'll see, of course, I'm in simulation mode. So let's just close out of that. Switch to there and apply Stuart's cricket strategy. Switch back to there. And let's see the bets going in. Of course, now it's in place. So there's a delay of uh, a good five seconds for each bet that's going in. Now, what ultimately we should find is that... Let me just pull these down a bit so we can see more. Okay, so you'll see our stop losses at 1.06 on Bangladesh and 1.06 on Bangladesh for 250 and 250 and 500. So that's a total of uh, 1,000 by 100 pounds liability. And we'll have the same for England. Uh, England at 1.06 for 500. England 106 for 250. Uh, scroll up a wee bit. England 106 for 250. And also notice that there is no offset bet waiting to be placed into the market, sitting at 1.4. And we can confirm that because you'll see here, this rule has fired and cancelled those bets. Now in actual fact, as luck would have it, the odds are actually coming down to our level. So we might as well just wait to see. And then you can see our Three lays have just been taken. And there's our offset bets now being entered into the market at 1.2 and 1.3. So you see Bangladesh bets have been taken because obviously Bangladesh has fallen below 1.1 and the bet's still sitting in there on England. So the England offset bets are still in the pending section and of course so are all the stop losses. So again I'll just uh, pause the video and skip ahead to see whether the stop loss is taken on Bangladesh or indeed it uh, rises again for the actual bets to be taken. Okay, there you can see our stop loss has been implemented on Bangladesh. Unfortunately, the market has gone through it um, quicker. So that would some be something that you might need to adjust. Um, so it gets triggered at 1.06, but if it's fallen below our required level of 1.05, as it has done in this case, uh, you'll see that the market is moving too quickly for you. Uh, so you may want to adjust that, uh, and that would require if I switch back to the editor, that would require you to change first of all the trigger point. Um, so rather than doing it at uh, four ticks, you may have to do it at three ticks, and you may actually have to increase place. Uh, so that may actually have to be, let's say, six ticks. It's, it's unfortunate, simply because of the way um, Stuart has asked this to be uh, created. That there aren't many ticks to play with for creating the stop loss. 
batteries. So you may need to adjust some of those. The other option, of course, is if you configure a trailing stop loss, um, that get out point would have increased, so that may be a bit better for you. Now, if I just cancel out of that and come out of this one here, You can actually see that um, Bangladesh has already hit 1.1 earlier on in the match. And I finished doing the strategy in around here. So we, we got into the market round about there. So if we'd been in the beginning of the game, um, that stop loss would have risen quite high, quite a bit if you put in a, a trailing stop loss. So that may be something that you need to consider. As you can see here, I think the, the main issue with this uh, on this particular match and this demonstration is simply that um, I entered the market far too late. But for the purposes of demonstration, I think hopefully you've seen enough that you need to see. Uh, some things that you need to play with, i.e. your stop loss positions, are probably the biggest one. But the, the, the thing to take away from this is the, the need on that third late back trade, because you don't want an offset, you still need to do a trade so you can configure the stop loss. But when you do that, you then need this cancellation rule, which gets rid of the pending offset bets from that, from that later back trade. Okay, hopefully you've seen enough there. By all means, give it a bash, but uh, apply it to the beginning of the race or uh, beginning of the cricket match. Um, rather than near the end that I've done in this particular example. Thank you.